Hello everyone, so today we're going to go through how to calculate a p-value with Microsoft Excel. So many of us might be used to calculating a p-value using a z-table or a t-table, which you have a z or t-critical value, and then you go solve for it using the table just to find the associated p-value. But there's actually several different functions you can use in Microsoft Excel that helps you find the p-value as well, and it's actually a lot simpler once you get used to it. Um, pretty much the short story of it is that this chart right here tells you everything you need to know, where we go step by step, drill down the logic to decide which one of these Excel functions we use to solve for your p-value. So we pretty much start with the test statistics, see which one we have, either a z or a t. Then we look at our alternative hypothesis type, whether it's a one-sided upper tail, one-sided lower tail, or simply a two-tailed test. Then we look at the sign of our test statistic, which is only relevant if we have a two-tailed test finally leads us to the fourth step, which is just using the appropriate Excel function to plug in and thus solve for your p-value. So to go through each of those steps in the chart, first we ask ourselves, is it a z-test or a t-test? So based on different statistics classes, I've actually seen different thresholds being used to decide whether or not it is a z-test or a t-test. The one that I'm most used to whenever we're dealing with Excel is whether we know the population standard deviation or not. So if it's a z-based problem, first of all, if it's a proportion-based problem, then we're going to use a z-test no matter what. So if we're talking about a percent, like a part out of the whole, instead of a mean or an average number, then in that case, we're just going to go straight to a z-test, where if we don't know that, and it's just a mean-based problem, we ask ourselves, if we do know the population standard deviation, we're going to use a z-test. And if we do not know the population standard deviation, we use a t-test. So that's how you decide the first criteria right there. Moving on, we're talking about the alternative hypothesis type, at this point, you should have already set up your null and alternative hypotheses. And if you're not sure how to do that, I actually have another video that explains whether or not you know you're dealing with a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test, and if it's a one-tailed test, how you know if it's a upper tail test or a lower tail test. So I'll put the link in the description for that and timestamp it for you. But pretty much after you have your uh, hypothesis set up, you're going to just look at your alternative hypothesis and whatever it says, match it up with the chart. So if the alternative hypothesis says greater than, that means it's a one-sided upper tail test. If it says less than, that means it's a one-sided lower tail test. And if it's two-tailed, it's just not equal to is what the alternative hypothesis will say every time. So you just simply jump straight into those two-tailed considerations. So that's how you do steps one and two to look through the chart. When you look at step three, we're talking about the sign of the test statistic, which really only matters whenever dealing with a two-tailed test, because you can see at the chart up at the top here, if we have a one-sided upper tail or lower tail, whether we're dealing with a z-test or a t-test, you can just jump straight into the Excel function that you use to find the p-value. So the sign of the test statistic only matters when we have a two-tailed test. So the way we do that is just by looking at the test statistic we calculated and deciding whether or not it's positive or negative, just seeing whether or not it was. Um, so the way we solve for those test statistics, whenever we're talking about a Z or a t-test, it's the same uh, formula for both of them, is going to be one of these two formulas down here. Uh, the first one is going to be for a mean-based problem, where we have an x-bar, which is your sample mean, mu, which is your population mean, divide that by your standard error, which for a mean-based problem is s, your standard deviation, divided by the square root of n, which is the number of trials in your sample. So you can solve for that right there, or if it's a proportion-based problem, it's a completely separate calculation, even though it still solves for the same thing, either your z or t, um, but it's just done like this, where f is going to be your sample proportion minus pi, which is your population proportion. And one thing I want to mention is that in different statistics classes I've had, I've seen different variables used for the sample proportion versus the population proportion. So just make sure whichever variable is used for your particular class, just match it up to where you take the sample value, subtract out the population value, divide that by big square root, the population value times one minus the population value, divide that by n, and that's gonna give you your test statistic. So if it's positive, then follow the positive logic on the chart to drill down to decide which uh, Excel function to use. And if it's negative, do the same thing with that. So at that point, you just get down to the p-value that you drilled down. So for instance, if I had, let's just talk about the first one right here. So if I had a z-test that was one-sided upper tail test, and then I don't have to worry about this right here because it's not relevant for a one-tailed test, then I'm going to use this equals one minus norm.s.dist zc comma one. And the zc right there is just the z critical value that you calculated down below right here. 
your Z or T, this section right here, is what you plug in for that. And obviously if you're dealing with the T value instead, then you actually plug in the TC. And you can see whenever we're dealing with the T test, so with these sections right here, we have whether or not it's one-sided upper tail or lower tail, we look at these Excel functions associated with it, and it's T.dist, TC, which is just going to be the T value you calculated, DF, which I want to point out, DF is just simply N minus 1, so the number of trials in your sample minus 1, you plug into that and it gives you the P value. So I hope this chart helps you out. You just start from the top with your test statistic, go into your alternative hypothesis type. If, you, if it is a two-tailed test, look at the sign of the test statistic, find out which Excel function to use, and then use it. So thank you very much.